What's up, guys? Earl at Sumo Bully Kennels. Uh, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, have a seat, kick back. Let's get into this episode. If you are an um, existing supporter, thank you very much for all your support and your viewership. Uh, we hope we deliver more value for you than anybody else. So, um, today is our uh, update Wednesday. So, today is our two week update from our litter from the Klaus and Fortuna. That's our Brazil on Brazil breeding. Let me show you that in our website. Okay. So if you go to our breedings, upcoming breedings, you're going to see Klaus and Fortuna. And, and you're going to see it right here, right? There it is. With the breeding banner. Why we did this breeding muscle bone structure, breed type, definition. These are two hyper type dogs that really um, have a freaky expression for the breed. Um, this litter will deliver a unique pairing of two hypertype dogs. The substance of both these imports possess will be great building blocks for breeders uh, and special wow factor for the show ring. This litter will produce a true foundation for the next generation of XL bullies to come. So we paired this because we truly believe that. That from this litter you're going to produce something here you on U.S. soil that is you know registered as american uh xl bully or american bully however the registry in brazil is ibc which makes it a pit monster right and i'm um, getting a lot of these questions asked i'm gonna answer them uh the our breed is young and so what the pit monster came to be in brazil is dogs that were sent from the U.S. to Brazil, such as Pity, Staffies, Bulldogs. And the composition of the Pit Monster is pretty much the same breeds that compromise that comprise the American XL Bully. Uh, the ratios is where it differs. I, I believe that the uh, Brazilian Pit Monsters have more Bulldog and more Terrier influence versus uh, the american counterpart or cousin the american uh, xl bully but the basic components of what makes these dogs are the same they're both a companion breed what i do like about brazil because of the climate down there the humidity and the heat is that these pit monsters that come from brazil that get registered here as american xl bullies are more durable right more weather towards uh, hotter environments they can thrive and survive in those environments where our american xl bullies here you got to be careful and watch them because they can overheat and have issues and we can lose our dogs right we never want to do that so without further ado why this pairing this is an amazing pairing guys here i did this episode in january 2024 when we did this breeding i explained why we did this breeding and what i liked about klaus and finding the correct female for him that was a big thing of mine because fortuna has a heavy bulldog influence and you're gonna see that an expression of her forehead um you know where the eye set the set of the eyes the, the you know for a female Look at the look at the cheeks, right? Those apple cheeks, uh, and that's kind of what we're lacking a little bit in the American XLs, right? The the, the, the nog in the forehead and the cheeks more. I like a pronounced cheek uh, muscle, like the pockets. And so, if you look at Klaus, for a dog that's uh, you know 22 and a half, 132 pounds, uh, he has the. I love what I like about him is he has the ratio. Uh, that's as close to a pocket as you can right in a big packaging 132 pound packaging so if you guys ever see pockets and they're amazing amazing structure big old heads muscles just look like little miniature bulls right and so one of the things that i loved about klaus is his musculature his structure and his expression you know like the, the stoop on the back of the neck right here you know it reminds you of that pocket look but in an XL frame, and that can haul butt, right? This guy can haul butt, drag tires, play rope, tug on the rope, uh, chase balls, name it, right? So you're getting the muscle, the look, 
the bully type, right? The breed type is say with the functionality. Um, what I like about Fortuna is she brings a different expression of a female here. Um, she doesn't have your typical, you know, your females typically have that feminine soft features or you get the, the, the really, really bully females that are big but maybe lack some of that, uh, that uh, muscle and tight skin, right? So for me, um, I like the tight skin look. I like the muscle look. I like the functionality. Uh, I like the funk, uh, the the performance of the dog. Right, both of these dogs will fetch, run, tug, everything, and I don't have to worry about it. And they're weather to heat. Both of these are import dogs that come from uh, you know tropical, hot, humid environments. I know it's a durable dog. And so, with all that said, and having amazing packaging of of muscle, substance, look, bone, it truly is something that I envisioned like I knew I wanted Klaus and I got daughters of Klaus however I was looking for the right female to take him to that's gonna complement number one and enhance his features so for me it's all about the mixture the pairing the ratio right <coughs> in Chicago here we say if you put ketchup on your hot dog you wasted the hot dog right for mustard people up here in Chicago. So that's what I mean by, you know, accenting. Um, for me, I needed a female with a little bit higher koi than Klaus. Um, she is a 17 in koi and bar clear. So yeah, Klaus is also clear. And he's a 12. So he's going to add some into it. But I really am looking for the forehead and the cheeks. Because if you can imagine Fortuna in a male posture, right? And she's she's got a nice spread for a girl. I'll be honest with you, I really I really like her. So the first few minutes of this video, I'm covering why this breeding, right? Because a lot of you guys are asking me that. I'm gonna do the puppy update shortly, guys. But what's more important is why did I? You know, I got her from Brazil specifically to take her to Klaus. That was one of my visions, one of my starting points of what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, she missed um, when we bred her in January. So we did the repeat breeding in June. And now we have six pups on the ground. I'm losing my voice a little bit, so pardon me. I'll slow it down a little bit. But no, here. This is what I saw, and I'll start with Klaus, is that I got to spend time with him. I had to see him. you know. And so did a lot of you guys who used him as a stud. You got to see this amazing dog with a beautiful temperament. Um just a dog that wants to please that wants affection that's not hyper aggressive towards humans or other animals that gets along with other males on the yard i mean just a good old boy right so here we go klaus canil Ro try to i don't know how to rewind this but ocha from samba kennel there you go let's get out Meet the extreme XL American Bullies superstar, Klaus Canil Rocha, from Samba though. Kennels. Imported from Brazil, this two-year-old Titan boasts a striking 22-inch height, 132 pounds weight, and a 27.5-inch head. Klaus's standout features include his mighty shoulder and rear muscles, owing to his gaudy line Dax pedigree in the fifth and seventh generations. Yet despite his daunting build, Klaus has a loving demeanor, and an irresistible love for balls, hanging tires, and traction work. ABKC President Dave Wilson and international judges admire him as a breed epitome. He's more than a bully, he's a celebrity. Klaus has revolutionized the XL world, setting the import trend of many bullies from Brazil. His influence extends globally, thanks to his record-breaking stud locks in 2023 and his premium semen availability in Europe, the UK, and soon Asia and Australia. Meet the so anyhow, that's what I saw. Got to see him in person. Spent a few hours with him, hang out with the family. Good family dog, guys. Love this boy. Truly, truly love this boy. And um, this is what we got here. Oh, no, I can't play that because it'll get demonetized for the song. But anyhow, here we go. Uh, there's Fortuna. You know, we were able to find something I was looking for. I knew what I was looking for. We just had to find it. And um, 
once we found her, then it's from there working on how can we make this work and make our vision come true. Uh, thanks to our friend Araya of Sama Kennels who negotiated on my behalf and made this transition happen. We got her here to the U.S. So look at that girl. It's a beautiful girl here. And over here, she's a little over a year old. But nice structure. Look at that chest on her. Jowls, the forehead. And she's a sweet girl. Very sweet girl. There she is. Just our little beauty for Tuna, right? I threw up the banner today, too. Um, we did the non-animated banner today, which I will drop the animated banner in a few weeks. But basically, that's what it is, you know. Studying pedigrees, understand what we're dealing with. I wanted a female with a little bit heavier bulldog influence, specifically. And um, that's why we did this pairing. And they're here now. It's amazing, guys. They're truly, truly amazing. So now that I got out, out the way, um, temperament-wise, they're both good dogs. Uh, Fortuna does not like a dominant dog around her that's, you know, very imposing. She will make you respect her space. She's not dog aggressive. I could take her to the vet with a lot of dogs out, you know, in the lobby and not have a problem and not get kicked out. You know, her thing is just respect my space, you know, and especially she doesn't like dogs just running up on me. So, but yeah, that's our girl, Fortuna and Klaus. We look forward to this amazing litter. For you guys who are very interested in this, um, man, surprise. Wait till they're about a year, 18 months old. You're going to really see some. And these are, you know, they're bigger dogs, so they're later maturing. And uh, it's going to be super exciting. I can't wait. So without further ado, let's get into the update today. Week two, guys. A lot of changes from week one. Uh, half of them have opened their eyes. Uh, they're not just whining now. They're barking, right? 14 days in, they're strong puppies. Eat healthy, man. These guys just stay hungry, stay crawling. You know, when it's too quiet, I freak out. I got to go in there and check on them. <laughs> you know, pulling the whole Papa Bear Act is whelping, right? Got to make sure your babies are okay. Oops, sorry about that. So let's get into this video that I shot earlier that I'm going to play for you. So uh, this is our page here. If you want to check out for tune on our page, this is Araya of Samba Kennels. Please give her a follow. Check her out. She's got a YouTube, amazing YouTube channel as well. Um, this is our YouTube channel. If you want to watch the original pairing and I go over everything that I was looking at, go back and watch this video. This is an older video from uh, January of uh, January 7, 2024. Uh, this is our website if you want more information. So mobilekennels.com, right? And um, well, without further ado, let's see what these bad boys look like, right? So... Here we go. I'm going to start playing and I'll narrate this for you guys as best possible. Week two, very happy guys. Here we go, very exciting. Um, gotten a lot bigger from birth and a lot more active and a lot louder too. So we put um, colored Velcro collars on them so we can identify and we are way, today is weigh-in day. Like UFC fight night weigh-in. Let's go, here we go. Bam, first up. And I messed up on this one, guys. There you go. Zeroed out. We are putting on the scale. Big Thanos. There he is. He's roughly 3.1. Okay. We'll call it 3.1 because he won't sit still. But Big Thanos is got a blue collar. All black male. He's got a white, um, like Y on his chest. It's like a Y marking on his chest. Looks like a white, like, almost like Batman, right? Let me pause that real quick. Ah, nope, get back over there. So, Thanos has a white Y on his chest. And he's got a big head. Um, cutie pie, here we go. Next up, um, let's see, who do we have? This is, I think, Gray Band. Yep, this is King T'Challa. Um, yeah, King T'Challa. Right here, the Black Panther himself. So King T'Challa does not have any white on him, I believe. Could be wrong. So right there, he's just slightly smaller than his brother. Oh, no, 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 yes, that's King T'Challa, correct. King T'Challa does have white on him, I'm sorry. Pause. Okay, so these three males, no matter how they look on video, 
the weight is so close that it's almost insignificant. So the three males we have, we did the first one, which is Thanos. The second one was uh, King T'Challa, the Black Panther. Uh, this guy here with the yellow, this is Kobe, the Black Mamba, um, in uh, in honor of Kobe Bryant. I love Kobe Bryant, a uh, big fan of his. Uh, that's why we put the yellow collar on him. So this is Kobe, a.k.a. the Black Mamba. Let's check him out. Let's see where Kobe's at. Way in, Kobe. There you go. Look at his face. Cutie pie. Boom. Where are we at, Kobe? See? Three point six, three point eight, see, three point five. So that's what I'm saying. It's very minuscule the difference between the three males. Let's pause right there. So we just three did three males. I'm gonna apologize because when I did um, Thanos, I didn't show you his face. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you Thanos's face. So we can rewind again. So let's go back to where it's okay. Here we go. Let's slow it down. And I should have done this a little bit slower. The next update, guys, I promise I'll be better. So here he is. Bam. King T'Challa, the Black Panther right there. All right? Nice head on him. Still young, so can't really tell. And you can see Mom back there just letting us work. There he is. Cutie pie. But yeah, every week we're going to do a weigh-in, guys. There he is. We'll get back over to uh, Kobe in a minute. Let's go, Kobe. Kobe. Kobe, right there. Black Mamba. I believe Kobe is the... Uh, Kobe doesn't like to be handled. He's uh, <laughs> he's cranky today. So he was... Uh, I think Kobe's the one without the white. But I'd have to ask my son. I forgot. There's Kobe again, guys. Okay. Hold still, Kobe. 3.8, 3.9, see? 3.5. That's what I'm saying. They're, it's very minuscule, the size difference. And, of course, they're still young. We can't see them. the difference between um, the structures on the pups, right? Now, next up, we're going to go through the three girls. So, we gave the girls these. Oh, by, by, by the way, guys, these are just play names. Just so we know we can differentiate between them, but the next three girls, um, it's kind of funny. But here we go. Here we go. The first one we're gonna bring up. This is who we call Phoenix, with the red collar. Phoenix is a big girl, and she's a whiner, and she eats the most out of everyone. She's the size of the boys. Uh, in fact, we call Phoenix Audrey, uh, which is my wife's name, because my wife is very bully. Uh, and she loves to eat. <laughs> so, Phoenix, a.k.a. Audrey, is, I would, when they were born, was the biggest female. But you're going to see, like, just because they look bigger, they don't really weigh that much more. So, you'll see right here. Here's Phoenix. Cutie pie. Look at that. Look at that chest. Look at that muscle right here. Ooh, look at that. Two weeks. Look at those shoulders, right? Pretty cool, huh? Here we go. Let's go, Phoenix, a.k.a. Baby Audrey. Thicker than a peanut butter snicker. Bam, let's go. You see how, see how much he went? Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. Nope, missed it. Rewind. There you go. See, 3.8. I would say 3.8, 3.7. Just slightly smaller than the biggest male. Actually, the same weight as the other males. This next one here is um, with the pink color is Nova. We call her Supernova. And because she is the same color as um, Audrey or Phoenix, we call this one uh, Nova slash Eileen. Eileen is my wife's younger sister, right? So this one's Eileen. This is uh, Nova, a.k.a. little Eileen. There she is. Look at that cutie. Nice head on her. Nice chest on her. Little baby. And little Eileen weighs. Hold still, sweetheart. <laughs> she see, they all weigh about the same. That's what I'm saying. Two weeks later, pause. Right? 
So you see that all the boys and all the girls are within fractions of size, which is phenomenal. It's great for consistency. There really is no runt is what I'm trying to tell you, right? And normally at two weeks, you're going to see the, the ones that lag. Um, and it's kind of good. I don't like a super big litter. I'd like a six, eight, or even a ten. It's fine. But you can see that um, when you say, well, where are the small ones? The scale will tell you because your eyes will deceive you. What you think or perceive as bigger when you hold it, when you put it on the scale, you're going to see it's the same. Here we go. What we got here, oops, sorry. This is, this is Rogue from last week, right? That's why I put the green on her. To signify Rogue, she has that white stripe in the middle of her forehead. Um, this is Baby Rogue, and her name is Rogue, no other nicknames. There's Baby Rogue right there. Nice little head on her. Looking for short muscles, which uh, we should get. Here we go. Come on, Rogue. Sit still. 3.5 for Rogue. So, Rogue is smaller than Audrey and Eileen, or Phoenix and Nova. But she's still within fractions, right? And we're talking about 3.5 versus 3.1 pounds. Okay. So, now we're getting past Rogue. That's the three girls, three boys. This is what I didn't do. So I'm gonna pull up. Um, I'm gonna pull up uh, Thanos here. There he is. See. And I don't know, but to me, it looks like he's got a big old melon head. Um, so Thanos looks like he's got the meatiest head of them all. Uh, but you see, he's close to the same weight. You know what I mean? But if you look at his proportions, which I'll show you in a minute. And as the weeks go by, we're going to be able to see this, guys. So we're trying to put them all together. Look at Thanos' head right there. Pause. What? See? This is what I'm talking about. Look at his head. To me, they're so close in weight. But look at Thanos' head. And then look at um, Supernova. Uh, here's the Supernova. Uh, Phoenix, a.k.a. Audrey. See, these are the males. Thanos. Here's uh, Kobe right here. And then here's uh, King T'Challa, right? I already showed it to you by weight that they are so close together. Now, if you look at them side by side, it's even more hard to determine which one's bigger than which. Because some of you guys are asking me, like, oh, which one's the bigger one? Which one is the runt? Well, based on weight right now at week two, I couldn't tell you. And as the weeks go by, that's why I'm going to do these updates. You're going to see the weight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the dogs as they get bigger, they're more active, they're moving around. You're going to see, see them uh, move, play, bark, all that good stuff. So here we go. Trying to give you a nice zoom right here so you're seeing there. Okay, Tuna, get out of the picture, sweetheart. Uh, so you see uh, even uh, Supernova's got a nice head over here. Right? You, you got Rogue over here. Here it is, look. See, it's like, how do you even determine them? And um, this is what I like about this litter is that right now, and I hope it's, I'm, I'm hoping it stays this way, nutritionally, that's what I'm working on, is that I don't care which pick you get, you're going to win, right? Obviously, there's a hierarchy in pick because as they grow older, you're going to see a separation. There are going to be distinctions, slight distinctions of which has a better head, spread, whatever. Um generally speaking right my thing is to not have a distinction so that all three of them are just ridiculous and if you were the one uh picking a pup you would have to ask someone else to pick your puppy because they all look the same like the structure is the same the head size weight and that's the consistency that we're trying to achieve and uh basically accomplish i bought into the first klaus and lily litter klaus meets zion meets bossy's tetra that litter was super consistent and that was 10 pups and i got two out of the 10 to be honest with you and i'm happy and even looking back now 13 14 months later which one would i have picked one has slightly better this one has slightly better this Ultimately, I'm happy with what I got because the disparity between 
the picks was so small that it doesn't it didn't matter to me is what I'm saying and that's what we're hoping for in this litter is as these pups grow that the disparity is so small that you're gonna be pulling your hair trying to pick your pick which one you want and uh, that is the sign of a good pairing right now if I had 12 puppies or whatever 14 yeah you might see a size discrepancy because they grow different um, in the in the um, in the belly, and even some of the pups might have been uh, fertilized later, so they would be younger, which doesn't mean anything because ultimately, our breed takes about three years to mature. You know, you really see the beauty of a female when she hits three, three and a half, close to four years. So, I think we get too hung up in the beginning of size and weight and all that, where you just have to give the dog time to mature. To be honest with you but i'm looking forward to some very very impressive things from this litter you see um little audrey there has her eyes open already and uh yeah here we go so we're doing weekly weigh-ins guys here we go we're gonna weigh uh we're gonna weigh thanos there you go i'm sorry this is on loop so it's just looping now anyhow uh very happy tremendous difference between week one and week two in terms of look at the size of them right if you guys watched the last video just the size difference in seven days the activity level how loud they are when they're whining and they're barking now they don't you know look look at that look, look at little uh uh black black uh panther over there king t'challa look at that head on him so uh yeah guys this is the update video of week two so for those of you guys who love this litter, want this litter, been talking to me, listen, I'm opening up um, deposits at week four, guys. During this whooping time, during the weaning time, a lot can happen. And I don't want to take the deposits because I'm not trying to hold your money. You know, things can happen. But at week four, we are there. You know, they're going to get their first set of inoculations, um, boosters. So it'd be at that time that I'm going to open up deposits. And a lot of you guys have asked me, how does that work? Well, um, I accept a credit card, Zelle, whatever. I'm going to put it. I'm going to post it. You go on there. If you take that pick, that's your pick. It's first come, first serve, guys. I'm not I'm trying to make it fair for everyone so everyone has a chance to get into this litter. Is that, you know, I'm not doing backhand deals right now to get early deposits. Look, let, let's just wait till week four. Let's let the puppies develop so that you can see what you're buying. I'm not trying to rush you into a decision by taking a deposit right now. I want this, Number one, I want the pups to be healthy. Two, I want them to develop and mature. At week four, now we're talking, you know, whatever your budget is in order for you to put your deposit on that week. You want pick one, pick two, pick three. Cool. Do you. But I'm just letting you know I'm opening it up at week four. And then from there we work. 50% uh, deposit. Uh, that's your pick if that makes sense hopefully it does and i will open it up and as we get closer to week four i'm going to tell you how you're going to make those deposits uh, basically i'm putting it online tap click click once you take that that's it there's no more pick to deposit it's yours first come first serve guys um it's hard because i don't want to favor you know i don't want to favor nobody you know i want everyone to get a chance to get into this and my even my keeper my my keepers are have offers right now and the offer the my keepers have a price online it's not a secret i'm not playing highest bidder here i'm playing this is my price to get my keeper and if you want it come get it first come first serve i'm not price gouging i'm not telling you like hey well he'll give me five dollars and if you give me six dollars i'll give you my keeper but then along comes this other person says i'll give you seven dollars to get your keeper i don't play those games guys i want to be fair about it ethical there's a price for you to get my keeper. And the reality is, whether it's my keeper or my second pick, I'm probably going to hit you up in a year anyway because I want to stud credit because I'm going to spend money with you. That's how much I believe in this production. I need to know where my, my, my babies go because I need that blood back. If you're going to take it from me, then we still need to work. We still need to be in tune. Um, that's how I feel about it. So with that said, guys, week two update. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
consider liking and subscribing. Uh, we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up. And uh, this is an amazing letter, right? First, uh, you could say American Born Pit Monsters Black. Blackout. Blackout letter, right? Uh, sumo Black. Sumo Black Pit Monsters here in America. Here we go. Uh, get into this, man. This is going to be a good one, I promise you. When these boys and girls grow up, in about a year, year and a half, you're going to start seeing. You know, once they hit two, two and a half years, and you'll be like, yeah, okay. Here we go. And, and forward thinking of um, being innovative in creations and breeding. Um, we can also always follow the trends. There's big names out there that are very consistent in productions. However, um, I can't outdo anyone. All I can do is be creative in my own lane and, and have my own creation, right? And so with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching Earl at Sumo Bully Kennels. And I'll catch you boys and girls on the next one.